Okay, well, let's get started. Welcome to a, another Court of Care uh, webinar in our webinar series. This one is on normal grapho uh, elements in neonatal EEG, and it's presented by Dr. Audrey Nath. Dr. Nath is a pediatric neurologist and a scientist who completed her training at Boston Children's and Harvard. And following that, she had her fellowship in clinical, neuro clinical neurophysiology and epilepsy. And then she became an assistant professor at the Department of Neurology at Texas Children's Hospital, Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. Today, she is on the faculty at UTMB in Houston, and she um, uh, operates uh, a service where she reads remote EEG and IOM studies. And um, I am pleased to have her present today. And so welcome, Dr. Nath. Thank you so much um, for that really nice introduction. So today we're going to be talking about normal grapho elements in neonatal EEG. And I made this talk primarily for our technologists that are performing these studies. So if anyone out there is a pediatric epileptologist, then this is going to be very basic for you, probably, <laughs> if you routinely read these studies. Briefly, we will talk about the neonatal montage and how that's different from the adult montage. We'll go through an example awake tracing and a sleep tracing. We'll talk about developmental trends and discontinuity, as well as trends in interhemispheric asynchrony that are expected in neonates as well as a summary of normal neonatal EEG grapho elements by corrected gestational age, CGA. So first off, we'll talk about the neonatal montage. Um, and if anyone out there does these routinely, this will be pretty basic, but just for anyone out there who maybe doesn't do a lot of neonatal EEGs for the techs or maybe adult epileptologists, um, essentially the idea is since the baby's head is so incredibly small <laughs> that we use a modified montage with just uh, nine electrodes. Because here in this figure, we see the nine electrodes in the neonatal montage in these dark black circles. Uh, and in the gray, in the background, you can see the traditional 1020 montage that we would use in an adult. And essentially, if you were to try to do the adult montage on a very small neonate's head, the fields would just be completely overlapping. Um, and it, it wouldn't be very readable, especially in our preemies. So we use a, a special neonatal montage. And along those lines, for readers who maybe don't see a lot of neonatal EEGs, I just wanted to show this example of what a neonatal montage might look like on the EEG. So it's a it's a bit different than the standard double banana. We can do a bipolar montage. We include the ear reference uh, to handle the end of chain. Uh, and this is what a standard neonatal EEG would look like. Next, let's look at an awake tracing from a neonate. Uh, and what I want to stress here for our techs and for our non-pediatric epileptologists is in an awake tracing of a neonate, we're not going to expect something that looks like a PDR, a posterior dominant rhythm. We're not really going to expect an anterior to posterior gradient. The PDR is something that you'll start seeing maybe at around three months of age or so. Um, and I say this because this is not necessarily obvious. And I've seen some neonatal EEGs that are marked, you know, in various places with, oh, no, where's the PDR? PDR seems slow. <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 we, we don't expect it yet. This is a 36 weeker. What we do expect is kind of like what we see here. It's an admixture of frequencies. We see some delta frequencies. We see some alpha frequencies. We see some theta frequencies and they're all admixed. And this is what we would expect in an awake baby. Uh, Here's, I'm just going to show a few pages of this, but in this example, this uh, awake tracing is pretty continuous and I would say fairly symmetric between the two halves of the brain. And we'll talk about that a little more. So I just wanted to kind of give a sense of what an awake tracing would look like. And to quote the Eli Mizrahi textbook, this combination of uh, frequencies, delta, some delta, some theta, some alpha, all admixed together is what we call activité moyenne, because apparently neonatal EEG was like invented by French people. <laughs> so uh, the terminology is in French. 
So that would be a normal waking background with activité moyenne, which is average activity. So next, I wanted to point this out, um, some normal features of a neonatal EEG, um, which might not look so normal if this wasn't an adult. All right, so here's an example. I don't know if you guys can see my arrow, but in the middle of the screen, there's these kind of um, uh, negative deflections in the bifrontal regions, a kind of FP1, FP2, they're kind of sharply contoured. Let me see, we have one more example. This is in the same EEG, the same 36 weaker. And so, you know, if this was an adult study and, and we were to see these, it'd be like, wow, that's kind of sharply contoured. Maybe we need to see some more examples of that. Maybe we need to see if that's epileptiform. So it turns out in neonates, this is normal. We call these um, on, on coche frontal, because once again, all of this is in French, but we call these frontal sharps in English. Uh, and these are a normal, excuse me, normal grapho element seen in neonatal EEG. And this is a figure example from the same Eli Mizrahi textbook, where you can see that it's maximal in the bilateral frontal regions. It is normal and not epileptiform. To kind of go over when would you see these frontal sharp wave transients? I refer to this graph all the time. It's one of the favorited photos on my phone because I refer to this so much. Uh, but on the x axis, we see the conceptual age and weeks all the way down to 26 weekers. Occasionally, EEGs do happen with preemies that, that small and going all the way out to like a couple months of life or so. And essentially, you'll see these frontal sharp wave transients starting as early as around 32 week preemies all the way until about six to eight weeks of life in a term baby. And it would be normal for that time. Next, baby is asleep. What will we expect to see then? So in this baby, we see that you see how there's kind of a burst of activity and then generalized suppression. And if this were an adult EEG, that would be very striking. Uh, that would be very un unusual. It would look like burst suppression of some kind, either due to severe encephalopathy or some sort of pharmacologic treatment. Uh, but essentially, in neonates, we can have a discontinuous background. And that's what we would call this, where you see um, polyfrequency activity followed by generalized suppression. And this is something that we could expect to see during sleep in a baby. And I wanted to show this example here because you can count out the how long the discontinuity lasts. So I'll count it out. It's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to 10 seconds or so of discontinuity. And that is about what you are allowed to have in a term infant. So I just wanted to show an example of that. And here's a bit of a longer period of discontinuity. And yeah, this is also hanging out right around nine, nine to 10 seconds of discontinuity in between these bursts of polyfrequency activity. So I just kind of wanted to go through a few pages of this so we could see what a baby a sleeping neonatal EEG can look like. So this is another cheat sheet sh chart that I use from the Mizrahi textbook that's also saved as a favorite photo on my phone because we use this so much as pediatric epileptologists. On the x-axis is conceptual age, that's CGA, um, I guess corrected gestational age really is, is what you would be using here. And the y-axis is how long those periods of discontinuity would be expected to be. Um, and it is striking in, let's say, a 24-week, very significantly premature infant. You would expect to see 60 seconds or a full minute of that generalized suppression between bursts. And then it kind of comes all the way down to where you have a 40 week or term baby where you can get up to 10 seconds of suppression in between bursts and that's considered normal. I think those numbers have changed over time um, based on new data that's come out. I think we used to be a little more stringent at around six seconds, but then more data came out and it looks like around 10 seconds is allowable. And you know, I, I think it's kind of impossible to memorize all these numbers. So when I have, when I'm reading premature baby EEGs, I absolutely open this chart first thing and see what would we expect for this baby. And if the baby has periods of discontinuity, which are much longer than what we would expect, we call this an internal 
dyschronism. And I know it's like kind of a, a long term, but it essentially means, well, I exp the baby's 32 weeks, but their EEG does not look like a 32 weeker. Their EEG looks like maybe a 28 weeker. So that's not matching up. That's a dyschronism. And that can be a sign of some sort of encephalopathy or brain insult that happened at the earlier age and gives us some clue that hmm, maybe something happened. We might need to do more workup with this baby to see what happened to their brain. So these values are really helpful and the kind of thing we have in our pocket all the time as neonatal EEG readers. Next, I wanted to show an example of what a, just a very subtle asymmetry would look like between the two hemispheres. So at the top, we have our odd numbers, the left hemispheric EEG leads. And at the bottom of the screen, we have our even numbers, the right hemispheric EEG leads. And we kind of, I don't know if you can see my arrow, but essentially with this first kind of in the middle of the page, it kind of starts in the left hemisphere before you, maybe two or three seconds before you see that similar uh, admixture of frequencies in the right hemisphere. So that's a little bit of asynchrony. And just like everything else in neonatal EEG, there is a chart that shows you how much of this is allowed by conceptional age. This is also saved on my phone. <laughs> so basically my phone is all just my own baby pictures and these graphs. Um, so essentially when a baby is awake, so that's the middle of this uh, graph, um, essentially when they're a little preemie at 27 to 30 weeks, it would be totally okay for the EEG to be completely asynchronous. So the left hemisphere is doing its own thing, the right hemisphere is doing its own thing, and they, they kind of just fire on their own drums. Whereas by 36 weeks and on when they're awake, it should be pretty continuous, which is what we saw earlier with that awake tracing. And then the ages in between are kind of in between. Whereas during non-run sleep, for example, at the bottom row of these circles, um, even for a term baby, you see how, um, I don't know if you can see my arrow, but essentially even for a term baby during non-REM sleep, you're allowed to have a little bit of asynchrony between the two sides, even at term. So this is just a little kind of rough idea of is this normal or is this far more asynchrony than we would expect for the age? So once again, I want to review this chart because it, it's so important and it helps us understand what is normal and what is not normal in neonates and premature babies. So to, these are the grapho elements that we expect in neonatal EEGs. And this is also from that Eli Mizrahi textbook. It's really helpful. Essentially with the very, with the young preemies and neonates at the bottom, we see these belted, excuse me, beta delta complexes. Uh, which you can see mostly in preemies and all the way up to term. Uh, there are other grapho elements that don't quite last as long and can help you, as we call, as we call it, date the baby and kind of figure out how old would you expect the baby to be. And those are temporal theta range bursts that we see around 30 to 32 weeks. And then another feature that's even more specific in time are temporal alpha bursts that puts you pretty much at 33 weeks of gestation. So some of these are little helpful markers, little helpful clues for, for us pediatric epileptologists. Then we see this very broad range of time for the frontal sharp wave transients, those encoche frontal that we saw earlier, it looks like little check marks in the frontal regions. Those last a long time. So those don't really help you in terms of figuring out what age the baby could be, but are there for a long range of time from like 32 weeks all the way to six to eight weeks of, of being alive. Trace alternant, that's a, another one of these neonatal EG French terms uh, that refers to uh, kind of that a mild degree of discontinuity during sleep when the amplitudes are higher and then come a little lower and go up higher and a little lower alternating between those two. And that's why it's alternal. And that's, you can actually see all the way up until about six to eight weeks of being alive and not in gestation. Meanwhile, the things that you expect to see in adults, like sleep spindles and vertex waves and a PDR, those, those come a little later. So spindles, I usually think of spindles starting at around six weeks to two months. It, we kind of use a little mnemonic for spindles that you start to see them around two months and then they should be synchronous by around two years. That's kind of the little 
frame of reference that we use for sleep spindles. So in the beginning, in little babies, when you see sleep spindles, you might see them just in the left hemisphere or randomly in the right hemisphere and not lining up at all. And that is okay until all the way up until two years. Uh, vertex waves, yeah, those start at about six to eight weeks of life. And then that posterior dominant rhythm, PDR, or it's referred here as the occipital dominant rhythm, ODR, that comes up more like two to three months of life. Um, and for the pediatric epileptologist, we deal with this every day, but I know for the adult epileptologist, have to look up tables for these things. But essentially we think of the PDR starting at around three months and being around three hertz at three months. And then it goes to six hertz by around one year, seven hertz by around two years, eight hertz by around three years, and then nine hertz by nine years-ish. It's kind of just the frame of reference that we use to know if a PDR is appropriate for age or if there's slowing for age. So thank you so much for listening to this. And I will once again <laughs> refer everyone to this really great textbook from Eli Mizrahi and Richard Rockavy that they wrote back in, at Baylor, where I trained, that has, it's an atlas with really nice examples of each of these grapho elements. So anyone out there working with neonatal EEG, I highly recommend this book. Thank you so much. Oh, I see some questions. Uh, what about trace discontinue? Yeah, essentially, um, uh, hello there. Um, essentially, that's just a, a, a more striking example of the discontinuity where you have like, well, reasonably moderate amplitude activities that are separated by lower amplitude activities, essentially. Well, thank you. Um, if there are questions, you can enter those into the uh, chat area and I will address those with uh, Dr. Nath. So it's we'll so great to see minutes. every one of you um, checking in. That's really cool. From all well, I don't see any at the moment, and uh, I must say that that was uh, uh, really enjoyable to listen to you. You presented very well, and I appreciate uh, the time you put into this. I uh, request um, that if uh, in the future uh, we have you back, we'd like to get a bit deeper and get into more of the abnormal aspects of sure. things. Sure, absolutely. And uh, uh, again... Um, this was well attended and clearly an interest in the marketplace for us here. Um, I want to thank you all. Uh, a couple of things before we close. Uh, there will be an email coming to you for a uh, evaluation that needs to be completed uh, if you're going to uh, apply for asset CEUs. So this course was uh, approved for one CEU. Uh, also, this um, program was recorded and the recording will be posted in uh, probably about 48 hours and you'll get notice of that as well. So you can link in and review this anytime you wish. Uh, again, thank you very much, Dr. Nath. And uh, to all of you, uh, good day. Thank you.